Hey everybody, how you doing? Good afternoon from wet Tokyo. It is not a picture perfect day for doing this. Behind me is the Imperial Palace. That's where the Emperor lives. Uh, this is a lot of the uh, Japan's governments behind me. And right there is the entrance to Hibiya Park. We're gonna be going in there. How you doing everybody? Um, so th this is a historical walk in Tokyo. This is one that there's the entrance to Hibiya Park again. We're gonna be going in and taking a look at the Liberty Bell of Tokyo and kind of wrapping our heads around what the heck is this place? I mean, it, this is something when I was in elementary school, we all made the trip to Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Uh, we went to study the history of the Revolutionary War, 1776, freedom, independence. All this was sim uh, symbolized within the bell itself. And um, the, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of Japan's Liberty Bell. It was, uh, <laughs> it was actually um, given to Japan from the United States. It is exactly like the one in Philadelphia. Um, despite this weather, and I want to thank you all for joining me in this really not really nice day. <laughs> it's really coming down here in Tokyo. Ah, there it is up there. So it's this, this is Hibiya Park, which is a park uh, in the center of Tokyo. This is kind of like a miniature central park. This is a place where a lot of uh, foreign dignitaries and uh, uh, visiting people would stay at the turn of the century before World War II and then also afterwards. And that, that structure in the center of your screen is where the Liberty Bell is. That's where it rests across this very wet <laughs> park. Oh man, autumn has hit. You can see the leaves starting to fall, but that's not gonna stop us in the pursuit of liberty. Hey Andrew, thank you. Check if the word liberty is spelt correctly. <laughs> That's true. We will be taking a look at the um, original marker. There it is up there. It, it's kind of cool when you look at it from this point of view in the center of Tokyo. That is unmistakably the Liberty Bell. It's the exact same shape, the same weight. Everything is the same except for one detail, which we're going to get a, t a closer look at right now. It just started raining. I got out of the subway station. You can either get here with by um, uh, Hibiya Station, uh, Yurakucho Station, but Sakura Damon is right over there. It's about, I don't know, 150 meters from there to here. And we're gonna walk up and see the Liberty Bell. I think you, you, should, you should see it from the start here. Hey Spectre, 1065, hello from Albuquerque. Yeah, New Mexico. America. I'm kind of feeling it today. And I wanted to cover this because I got a comment from why Japanese live so long. I'm not going to ring it, but I was told at 12 o'clock noon it will ring. So that's why I wanted to start uh, a little bit early. Um, <coughs> so uh, somebody commented the other day, they said that um, why do Japanese live so long and why is it mostly women in the top 20 that are super centurions? And one comment was because a lot of the men had died in World War II and they weren't wrong. It made me think about all the people, all the servicemen that lost their lives. And then I remembered this at this site in Tokyo. Ah, here it is. It's ringing automatically. Check it out. Twelve o'clock, everybody. Oh, it's really swinging. Look at that. It's so close to striking now. Here it is. It's striking right now. Here we go. The Liberty Bell rings. Well, how come it isn't striking? How loud is this thing gonna be? It's not making a it's not making a sound. Let freedom ring! Let freedom ring! Let freedom ring! 
freedom ring, come on! Ring, bell, ring! No, freedom! Panathenia, don't lose your faith in freedom. What? No ring, come on, l let it loose. Is it rusted underneath there? Oh man, what? Give it some time, who knows, this could, this could be just on a timer release or something. Oh man, it's starting to slow down, no! Let freedom ring! Ring it! Oh, that's kind of disappointing. How is that possible? Dear Mayor of Tokyo, as an American citizen, I protest in the name of the elections, <laughs> the midterm elections in the United States. How can this bell not ring? How could there not be freedom? I stand upon you on the Liberty Bell Hill. It is a hill. How dare you not repair the bell and not let the freedom ring? How will these people in the office building behind us know that freedom exists? And it sort of is now dying. It's actually true. The freedom does not ring today. Hopefully it will ring on election day when everybody in the United States uh, decides to vote. Go and vote. <laughs> it's, it's Tuesday. Uh, it's Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon in Japan. It's Monday night in, in New York. What a, what a shame. <laughs> I can't believe that the bell didn't ring. I didn't hear anything. Was that supposed to be like that? No. Liberty. Miss Lady Liberty. Come Statue of Liberty and, and fix this. Ah, like Godzilla versus Lady Liberty. That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty interesting. All right, there is actually a plaque here and there is some history. Vote for what? I don't know. Uh, it's Tuesday, November. Um, first Tuesday in November is the elections and this is two years since the presidential election, meaning it's a midterm election. So uh, anyways, that's happening in the United States and freedom. That's all I have to say about that, like Forrest Gump. So, as we say here, um, this Liberty Bell was dedicated by Douglas MacArthur to the Japanese government in 1952. 1952 was the year that the United States um, uh, gave back the government to Japan and the occupation was over. And that occupation was from 1945. 1945 till 1951, they voted for it and then in 52, we seceded the uh, country back to Japan, and uh, that's when MacArthur. Um, he that the story goes. It's it's kind of a unique story, and there really isn't a lot of information on this Liberty Bell. But it was in 19, 1952 that MacArthur. Um, I guess he really wanted to leave a lasting impression on the city of Tokyo and on the country. And the best way to do that was was to show generosity. And I, in this live stream, we're gonna see a little bit. I want you to stick with me. We're gonna see a little bit of Hibiya Park in the rain because it's not sunny. But um, MacArthur was, it ex Douglas MacArthur, who was um, the super, I forget his title, oh gosh. But he was in charge of the Allied uh, forces here in the uh, Pacific region in, in Asia and he was an uh, um, extremely, extremely uh, intelligent man. He, um, and, and I could see the reason why he would do this just based on the rules that he set up, the laws that he set as soon as he stepped into Japan in 1945 in August. Um, I believe in 1952 he commissioned this and asked for US businesses that are anonymous to donate this Liberty Bell to Japan. And the reason why is so that they can know what liberty means, what freedom means, and not forget it. And this is something maybe that was in MacArthur's mind, the Liberty Bell, as a symbol um, and it was, it's a gift from the United States, but I, it's more like a gift from MacArthur. Hold on, I'm gonna wipe this lens for you. It's more like a gift from MacArthur um, than the United States, but it was businessmen. It was uh, private contributions that made this Liberty Bell possible, not the actual government of the United States. This stand, the brick stand that you see that the Liberty Bell is in right now, was donated by the uh, Japan Newspaper Association. Uh, the Nihon Shimbun Kyokai, and they built this. Um, I don't know exactly when. I don't think that this this tower was here um, when they don't they dedicated the bell to Japan. But 
uh, it is here now and it's pretty cool. It's up high up there so, you know, people can't climb up there and maybe try to sleep with the bell or something or try to ring it. It's pretty high up there. But this is, a, as an American living in, in Japan, all these little reminders of, and still kind of moving a little bit, it's supposed to ring at noon and it didn't. All these little reminders of the United States makes me feel kind of good. You know, I don't have to go to Philadelphia anymore to see the Liberty Bell, I can see it here. As you can see, because we've already been around it once, it is missing one thing. Do you guys know what that is? <laughs> Do you know what's missing? I, are you seeing it front and back now? The inscription is the same on it. I'm gonna zoom up there. I gotta put the umbrella down to do that. The inscription is the same as the original um, original Liberty Bell. It doesn't have a crack, that's right. Ramsalent and uh, OCD Stig, yeah, the crack. It doesn't have a crack in it. It is beautiful, flawless, and this is what the Liberty Bell is supposed to look like. So if you wanna see it without the crack, you can come to Japan. That's the only thing that they could not replicate. <laughs> Why would you? Japan, we're gonna give you a cracked bell because we broke our own, so we're gonna break yours too. That now, nah, that wouldn't go down there. And you can see Pennsylvania on the top there. So there's the Liberty Bell. Exact same replica, except this one doesn't ring. They, I, I'm pretty sure they could replicate, they could replicate the, um, um, crack as well, <laughs> but they're like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Here is the, um, Japanese inscription for this, for all the historians out there. You can take a screenshot of it right there. Um, it's basically saying, uh, the Liberty Bell, the Liberty of Bell, Nitsuite. And on the back side, you have the dedication. This is this plaque is the dedication of the of the um, stand that the Liberty Bell is in, and it's it basically just says that it was donated by um, in the in the hope of freedom of the press um, by the Japan Newspaper Association. Uh, K W Y N Y U State. If this is was China, I would think it was a copy. <laughs> well, yeah, no, this was donated by the United States. Uh, Skull Crushers here. I love your videos, John. Really wish I could visit Japan. I hope you can make it too. There's no inscription back here. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Um, I'm going to tell you some stories, some personal stories that, because I'm, I was born in 1974, so that means my father's generation, um, my grandfather's generation fought in World War II. And now the millennials, people a little bit um, younger, don't have that same connection to history. They don't know too many people that were born during World War II. Uh, my grandfather fought in World War II. Let me get this around here. So this is a picture of Douglas MacArthur with the Emperor uh, um, when he came. And you can see this, is, it's very rare to see a picture where the Emperor stood up alongside with MacArthur. This is a very symbol, symbolic photo. I'm sorry it's not in better shape. This is like a printed out version from, from my computer. But it, it's getting wet now. I'm gonna put it away. But th th that's Douglas MacArthur in 1945, I believe, with the Emperor um, of Japan and they're standing side by side because MacArthur was an extremely intelligent man and he was also he also knew that Japan that were suffering here when the when the allied forces got to got to Tokyo when they got to Japan you could just see all around you and i've seen some of the museums of the history people were starving people did not have the the worst bombing in the history war went on in 1945 in march okay so when, when uh, MacArthur got here in, in August of August 30th, I believe, of 1945, this place was in utter ruins. T Tokyo was completely demolished. Let me just pan around here for you. You can see now it's, it's, it's beautiful now. Everything's been rebuilt. They've had an economic boom and a bust and a boom again and a bust. But now Japan looks really beautiful and peaceful. But back then, MacArthur saw absolute destruction. And the first laws that he came, he, he enacted were kind of touched me when I read them, and I hadn't read them in a while, but I read them again before this to try to get, to try to get a feeling of, of to put this in context actually, the Liberty Bell. Let's see here. He, here it is. So MacArthur arrived in Tokyo on August 30th, yeah, and uh, immediately declared several laws. All right, this is why I, I like this, the, symb the symbolic of, uh, symbolism of the Liberty Bell here. 
This is in 1945, and this bell came at the end of his tenure in 52. No Allied personnel were to assault Japanese people. No Allied personnel were to eat the scarce Japanese food. And flying the Hidomaru or Rising Sun flag was initially severely restricted, although individuals in prefectural offices could apply for permission to fly it. He was very lenient. This restriction was partially lifted in 1948 and completely lifted the following year, 1949. So MacArthur knew right away from the start that the people here were suffering and you can't have liberty and freedom and you can't have rebuilding and you can't have peace with starving people. And it, rem it reminds me of a, a story that my great uncle told me, Uncle Ed, um, in, in his, when he got really old, he would tell the story sometimes six times in an hour. <laughs> Which is like, because he knew, this is when I moved to Japan in 19, 1998, and I came back to visit, and he told me the stories of when he was in Japan during the occupation. And Uncle Ed, um, yeah, he's one of these guys who's always smiling, and you, I remember seeing him at the Christmas party, always always smiling, and he would, he told me the story, and he said, I, I, I don't I, I don't want to mess it up, but I know it revolves around when he was here, um, he just saw the people were starving, and he offered one Japanese man an egg. He offered him an egg, and uh, the guy was so grateful just to receive an egg that he'd never seen such appreciation um, <laughs> for receiving it. And it, for him, it was kind of shocking. And, and when I heard the story, I didn't quite understand the significance until I got here and started to study more about the war. But, the, but you could tell he was affected by the great appreciation that the enemy, because Japan had never been occupied before America did in 1945, was so gracious. And uh, gave, they gave food to people. Mr. Seiichi, who's my wife's grandfather, um, he's 97 years old now, and he told stories of when he was in the Philippines and he came back to Japan and how how gracious America was, they gave him chocolate. He loves America, and it's that generation. People might be more, people, the younger generation might forget about it, but people remember the older generation, how gracious the occupation was, and that set up for the boom. Yeah, that set up for the boom in the 19, uh, 1950s, which you see Tokyo Tower, um, Andrew Reedman Smith writes in, uh, visiting Japan in January, first time, can't wait. Love to meet up and buy us both a cheesy potato stick thing. Yeah, that's in the live stream the other day. Yeah, this is so good. By the way, everybody who's watching this, I'm doing a live a, um, meetup on the 8th in Amayoko. And uh, we haven't decided where, but it might be by the cheesy thing. So go to Facebook. If you go to Facebook, only in Japan TV, you can see where the meetup is. And I would, I would love to see you if you're visiting in, in uh, Tokyo on the 8th of August. So we can get, uh, sorry, the 8th of November. Wow, it's autumn. Um, come, and, come and visit and we'll get some street food on the 8th of August at 11 a.m. Uh, sorry if you're, if you're working at that time, but that's when we have. And we're going to have a special visitor. Um, Greg from Life Where I'm From said that he's going to try to join us. So it'll be me, Greg from Life Where I'm From, and maybe Alan from uh, My Life Japan might come to say hi. But it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I, I know Greg, I'm going to put the umbrella down. I think it's okay right now. I, I know Greg, um, I've met Greg a few times, so we might collaborate on a video, but it's, it's nice where we can come together and uh, have some street food. And if you're around, it's going to be fun too. All right. So I was getting a little bit of emotional, but things are really bad in the 19, 1940s after the war, 1945, and it was the American Allied Forces and MacArthur who said, look, you have to show, you have to show compassion to your enemy, you have to show them, um, you just have to be good people. And I think that back then, the, there were of course incidences, but the Allied Forces, now oh, the rain's starting to come, the Allied Forces that were here, stationed here, were pretty, pretty darn good. Especially around the country, I, I mean, there was stuff that happened, but I'm sure um, the the stories that I heard were all very, very positive, and that left such a great impression that as Japan, after the occupation, as Japan grew as a country, the connection between the United States was real, and you see that with the 1960s, the boom, a love for California. Even today, there's a massive love for Guam and Hawaii. There's uh, for Kanai's father's generation, that grandfather, they grew up loving like Elvis Presley and uh, American music and that freedom that was associated with it. It's not quite the same today. I think that things have changed a little bit, but um, it's it's these little things behind me, like this mem this Liberty Bell, and there's a couple other statues here that really give me give me um, 
I don't know, hope that what we did, uh, what America did, helping after the war and the way they did it was really, really great, I think. I mean, the battle in the Pacific was so, so awful. So many people lost their lives on both sides and then MacArthur came in and the first thing he said was, don't touch the Japanese food. Do not touch their food supply. Do not show them mercy. Don't assault anybody. Don't show any kind of anger or regression. Or, uh, this was huge. And um, yeah, and in today's world, when we see we focus on so much of the of the bad stuff that's happening around the world, I think it's kind of a breath of fresh air when you see such a strong leader after an awfully fought war going in and saying, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna prop up this country. We're not prop up, but we're gonna give this country back its dignity." And uh, <laughs> That's that's the right way. That's the right way to do it, especially back then. Um, so there you go. That's the Liberty Bell. Um, it's kind of not the perfect day to be doing this, <laughs> but uh, the weather is about. I don't know. It's comfortable. It's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe no. It's a little bit more than that. Maybe 55, 56 degrees Fahrenheit. 60 somewhere between there. Somewhere between there. Yeah. So there you go. I did not, we could not hear it ring, therefore Liberty. <laughs> Liberty's got some t technical problems. So I, I wanna say to any, any um, investors in the in United States who wants to make a nice contribution to help the Tokyo government make freedom ring again, I think they could probably use it. Although the Liberty Bell looks in very good um, condition, actually. It looks in very good condition and, and the base of it reminds me very much like the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia that you can see. It is beautiful. Yeah. We've, and this was back in 1952 when this was dedicated. Tokyo Tower started construction in, in 1953. This is when, when the Americans uh, uh, stepped out then Japan's democracy started to take over and you saw business explode. And that's when NHK started broadcasting TV in 1953, a year after America left the country. They needed a, t a tower to broadcast from and they constructed Tokyo Tower in 1953. They started and it was finished, I believe, in 58. And this started through television. Um, TV is a reason why people don't talk in regional dialects anymore. There's a Liberty Bell in the distance up there on the hill. Japan is such a regional country that there's 47 prefectures and at the time people spoke in their regional dialects and it was national TV in 1953 that started um, to bring unify the dialect too so people speak pretty much the same dialect but same in the United States I think people had strong dialects they still kind of do but TV was a unifying force where culture culture came together could unify the country. I'm gonna walk a little bit around Hibia Park and make my way back to Yurakucho Station. Um, it's raining, but uh, you know, one of the things about being out in the rain is that the greens are even greener. So try to look at the bright side here. Andrew writes in, have you done a video on the 47 Ronin graves? Not yet. Um, there's a lot of historical places, especially up in Tohoku and, and down in Mie and, and uh, the Kansai region. There's just too many things to cover. That's a great thing. Hello. Hi. How are you? Love your videos. Ah, oh, hi. What's your name? Mohit. Mohit, nice to meet you. I'm from India. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there in December. Oh, wow. Welcome, welcome. Woohoo. Which city are you in? Um, hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> I'll be in. Subscribe, uh, subscribe, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, like subscribe. It, like it. Hit He's the like awesome. button. No. He's awesome. I watched your Amiyoko Market video. Ah. And I tried that cheesy thing. It was awesome. Oh, cool. So yeah. you got the one that I got them. Potato yeah. mozzarella. Yeah, potato. <laughs> it was so unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, so unhealthy, but so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Hey, guys. So where, where where are you from? Which city? New Delhi. Okay. Oh, but <laughs> I, won't, I won't be going this time. But oh, you yeah. should come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where will you be? Like? Uh, Mumbai. Mumbai? We're only going to be... Kanai and I are going to India. Um, she's never been there before, so I kind of want to show her where my mom's from. and. Uh, 
We'll be there for six six days in Mumbai. Oh, wow. You yeah. should come to New Delhi. I know. Six <laughs> days is not enough to do India. So yeah. just focus on one city. And if she likes it, which I think she's going to fall in love with it, we're going to come back for a longer visit. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> but December also is such a beautiful weather in yep. India. So. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I just <laughs> yeah. found you. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. How, how long are you in I Japan for? Uh, I'm here for 30 days. Wow. And this is like uh, last week. Okay. So initially I came to Tokyo for one week and I took the JR pass for 14 days. Okay. And uh, then I went to Kawaguchiko, Fuji Kawaguchiko. Yeah, yeah, by Mount Fuji. Right. It's amazing. I saw the Mount Fuji. It was so clear. Oh, where the leaves had changed? Yeah. It's everywhere. It's autumn. Guys, come here right now. <laughs> come here. I know. Just, I, I tell everybody, this, well, even though it's not the best day today, yeah. but October is one of the best months because the, the humidity goes away. The weather's still pretty comfortable. It's not yes. cold. It's um, I'm in a t-shirt now. It's just for the rain. <laughs> I'm not wearing a t-shirt now because I, I didn't know what the weather was like outside. It's hard to predict. Check out the sky. It's kind of dark. Yeah. But yeah, October is the best the best time. You could just kind of usually the the skies start getting clearer too, and you get be really beautiful views of Mount. Did you get to see Fuji? Yeah. From Kawaguchi Ko? Yeah, it's Whoa. amazing. Do you have a picture? Yeah. I knew yeah. I knew yeah. you had a picture. Oh, I want to see the picture. I went to the Nagoya, Nara, Kyoto, Osaka. So many places. Wow. <laughs> How did so you went to Hiroshima as well? Hiroshima. Miyajima. Tsukima, yeah. Oh. Mount Sugoi. Uh, I guess. Uh. I've hiked it to get a beautiful view. Wow. So cool. <laughs> 30 days is not enough. I'm 30 thirsty. days is... I can't believe that. Yeah, 30 days is not enough. No. I've been here 20 years. That's not enough. I want to go to Hokkaido and Sapporo. Like, I want to do that. Yeah. So, just give me a second. I'm like, I have so oh, it's okay. Pictures. 47 prefectures. You, you, if you give one day to each prefecture, that's at least 47 days. So, oh, wow. yeah. No. I guess if you want to see it all, it took me, yeah, I didn't see all 47 for 13 years. It took 13 years to get to every prefecture. I don't believe it, but this is what I took. Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> what? Yes. That looks like a postcard. Yeah. <laughs> oh! With this camera? Yes. Wow. This dual camera. I don't know, it's just Chinese phone or something. <laughs> yeah, but it looks good. Yep. That's October and there's just snow up there, so that makes yeah. it even better. Without was, the snow, it's not quite as... Somehow, like, people from other countries were staying, for example, like, one month, mm. and they haven't seen a Mount Fuji, like, because of the cloudy, and I just Aww. went there and I saw it. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> the clouds part, and there it is. You didn't see from the airplane? Sometimes if it's cloudy below, but from the airplane coming into Tokyo... Did you fly into Tokyo? Yes. Ah, no, some, some, if you pick the right side of the plane, Usually you get really beautiful views, even if it's cloudy. Um, Mount Fuji will be popping over the clouds with the, with the nice snowy peak. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Kawaguchiko is amazing. Yeah. Nice. Is, that, is that your favorite place then? Kawaguchiko was the most... Where would you say is the one place? Yeah, I mean, I was thought to go Hakone, uh. Uh, like nearby Mount Fuji. Then I chose Kawaguchiko Lake because I want to see the forest, lava cave and uh, like Kawaguchiko Lake. Right. So I, I booked a tour from a Japanese firm so that to get the different experience. Mm. So <laughs> they took me to that Ahogihara forest. Yeah. And, oh uh, yeah, that's the suicide, suicide forest. Suicide forest. Uh, yeah. Then they, they just let me inside the cave with full gear mm. and headlights and everything. And I saw the ice. Wow! And it's amazing, guys. Just, yeah, just the forest. The forest is actually. You don't have to go looking for that kind of thing. The forest yeah. is actually pretty. It's um, very pretty. Which is why people go there for that. <laughs> it's because a beautiful forest. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, I don't know why it's like suicide forest, but if you know the history and everything, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm I'm afraid to go there though. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I found one of the facts. Like you cannot pick the actually volcano rock, oh. and you, you cannot take back home. They can actually fine you for for like five thousand dollars. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so it's like, really? Yeah. Like oh. that tour guide told me. I thought like just take as a souvenir and take back to India, but they said no, you cannot do that. Do they mark it with some kind of secret paint or something? How know. would they know? 
So I know what to get you when I come to visit India, right? Sure, a piece New of Delhi, volcanic please, rock. Yeah. <laughs> you have a free stay. <laughs> you yeah. Can I please come? All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be in Delhi one one of these days, but not on this trip. Come on down to Mumbai. How about that? <laughs> sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's very close. It's like two yeah. hours flight. I might be doing doing a meetup at, at the YouTube space in Mumbai. They have oh, wow. down there and. Uh, uh, Leaping Windows, I'm going to give them a call this week and see if, if we can arrange a, chan a way to meet up in Leaping, Leaping Windows where they have a, a manga cafe oh. in Mumbai, which is pretty really? cool. Really? Yeah. We have manga cafe in Mumbai? Yes. Yes. Wow. Well, it's not the same as here, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I did an episode on that about four years ago. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Wow. We need so many things from Japan to India. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Wow. Like, go for udon noodle restaurants like Hanemaru. Like chain, we need that. I'm addicted to that. Yeah. <laughs> so tasty, so good. You don't have it. Not, not. Well, it's, we're getting there now. Oh, it's oh, the rain it's starting really to come in. The rain starting to get in. Come down harder. Well, it was really. To interrupt you. Uh, no, not at all. Something. It was really nice to meet you. Um, you there you go. There's your picture. Yep. <laughs> Did you want to take a picture? I don't know. I can take you. it from there. Good. That's that's <laughs> the way. That's what I was saying. Okay. Snapshot. <laughs> Subscribe. All right. Subscribe. Oh, I like that one. All right, buddy. All right, see you later. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, man. So that's pretty cool. Um, I will be in India. Kanai and I got the tickets already. Uh, I have an apartment in Mumbai, so I, I, I got a place to stay already. But I appreciate all the people who have been um, inviting me to their place, which is really cool. Um, yeah, my mom is originally from that, um, that area of, of India, so... We have a lot of family in India. I mean, a lot of family. Like, a lot of family. I don't even know who everyone is, kind of, a lot. <laughs> um, Alright, I'm going to take you to the fountain, which makes no sense because it's raining and the entire city is a fountain. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't not, not, not take you. I shouldn't not, not take you. There are little snack bars in here. And one of the things I like about Hibia Park, besides the Liberty Bell, and the friendly people is that this is a great place to buy a bento or a box lunch and just sit and eat it in the park. Lots of benches here. On this side of the park, there really aren't a lot of people, even at lunchtime. A lot of the business people won't come out here. They'll eat at the office. There's a picnic table right there. I mean, of course, this isn't an ideal day, but who knows, in an hour or so, this could be an amazing place. Now, last year, around this time, Jennifer and I, Jennifer Julian and I, came here for the Christmas market. Uh, that's going to be starting in a few weeks. And this park, which is completely empty, is going to be completely full of Christmas spirit. And I'm kind of looking forward to that because Kanai and I are doing a... <laughs> Sorry, the signal is cutting out in the middle of the park. It's a power spot. So Kanai and, I, Kanai and I will be doing a world tour. Instead of going the short way um, from Tokyo to New York, we're going the long way back home to New York to visit. So basically we're going around the world taking one-way tickets. And it was only a little bit more expensive than taking a round-trip ticket from, from, um, from Tokyo to Japan, believe it or not, which is weird, but that's the way it worked out. Um, let me see here. Thanks for the comments. We're getting a lot of comments. Andrew Wright Center, is it cold in January? Yeah. I mean, it's not Can Canadian cold, but it's cold-ish. Tokyo gets Tokyo is about the same as Washington D.C., I would say, and New York City would be the same as like Sendai, which is cold. So there's a big difference between New uh, Washington D.C. and New York City. This is the water fountain in the rain. They could just turn it off, right? <laughs> it's like naturally fountaining. I mean, really, you can see it on the streets here. But yeah, in general, Tokyo, if it does snow, it snows for one day and it usually melts the next day. And the city stops because they don't know how to deal with snow. But if it snows in Sendai, they get like a hundred different, hundreds of snow plows that'll plow the city and everything. Snow tires, they got the city back in order in a day. So you can see the difference between the cultures. Tokyo is not a, not a super cold place, but it gets cold. You do need a down jacket. You do need to bundle up. You do need to hit Okinawa <laughs> to warm up, maybe. That might be a good idea. In the center of the screen is the um, Imperial Hotel. And that's another um, hotel with a lot of history. 
it's 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 grown a lot since the 1950s. You can see now it's just a massive structure. They've got loads of restaurants, um, very nice restaurants. I think uh, I ate a Kobe beef steak in there with one of my clients, a friend of mine. Uh, what if, I think the bill was a thousand dollars, but for two people. I guess it's a business write-off or something, right? Probably the best meal, the most memorable meal I've ever had. It's crazy there. Insanely good. So this is Hibia Station here. And this is pretty much kind of like the main entrance to the park. In the distance you'll see the Shinkansen passing by in better weather. There's a platform in the distance right underneath that red sign. There's a flower stand here. And I, I really do love this park. Um, whenever I get a chance, I'll walk through it to get from A to B. What happened to the plan of coming to Mumbai? Um, Anjum, I, I actually just announced that I was going to Mumbai. <laughs> so the plan is real. The plan is happening and the plan has been planned. That's why it's a plan. Um, I, Kanai and I leave here on the 10th and we fly via Sri Lanka, Colombo, to Mumbai. And we're spending one night in Mum uh, Colombo to meet with uh, fans in Sri Lanka. And I don't even know if we got viewers in Sri Lanka. If you're in Sri Lanka, raise your hand, but we're gonna be in Colombo for one night and I'm gonna go to, I'll be on Facebook and Instagram to announce the meetups there. If you're in Japan right now, we're doing a meetup on the 8th, the day after tomorrow. I'll be in Ameyoko Market with uh, my friend Greg and the event page is on Facebook. Yeah, it's on Facebook right now and you can you can uh, meet us. I'll put a map on where to meet up, but probably probably near that, ch that cheese potato place because it's so darn good. I could use uh, some more cheese potato. So I'll be able to share, share the cheese potato. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'll be able to share some cheese string, uh, springy string cheese with potato and coconut sugar with you tomorrow, uh, the day after tomorrow. So then we're in Mumbai for six days only. It's not enough time, but it's enough for, I, want, I wanted to show Kanai India, and I haven't been there in a while, so I just kind of wanted to, to stop over. Also because I've been promising it for months. And then we fly to um, Germany for a couple of days in Munich. So we'll do a meetup in Munich, Muhen in Japanese. And uh, we fly, then we fly to Paris where I'll be meeting some friends um, and maybe do a meetup in Paris. And then we fly from Paris to, to New York. But the cheapest flight, get this guys. Oh, look at the bird. Oh, that's such a beautiful sight. Look at that. There's a couple of other over there in the corner. Wow, this is a this is Japan that I know. It's a natural green place, even in the center of Tokyo. Let's go see if that bird. I think the bird flew down there. Oh, I see it. I see it. I know it's going to fly away if we get too close. There it is. Wow, that's a beautiful sight. <laughs> I'm just, uh, oh, I'm sorry, bird. I didn't mean this to startle you. Andrew writes in Bogut, Bogish, uh, long time lurker, first time donation. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. The birdie, the uh, bird flew just a little bit away, startled from me speaking again. Wow, it's, the rain's really starting to come down, guys. Beautiful, beautiful in, in Hibia Park. Um, yeah, it's nice if you're in the city and, and you just want to take a break from all the urban stuff. Just walk through one of Japan's, Tokyo's many parks. Tokyo has tons of beautiful parks. You can see, wow, it's starting to really come down. Check it out. 
This is not a good day. Be happy that you're watching this indoors, and hopefully you're not outdoors with me here. Yeah. So that's what's happening. Come join us the day after tomorrow in Amayoko, in Ueno, and uh, eat some street food with us. And I will see you either that, oh, oh, I was, I, I forgot to say, so for me to fly to, um, New York from Paris, the cheapest fare was Icelandic Air. So Kanai and I are going to spend two nights in Reykjavik because the hotels in the middle of winter are half price. It's just like it was too good to pass up so we don't get back into the United States until near Christmas time. And uh, I know I'm going to do a meetup in New York probably um, after Christmas, after the New Year. Um, right now it looks like on the 2nd or 3rd of January. But that's kind of good. People still have uh, uh, holidays, I believe. So we'll try to do the meetup in New York um, as soon as possible. Because last year we had an amazing turnout in New York. We had an amazing turnout, and it was so great to, to finally put um, faces to people who've been commenting and saying hi and following the channel for years. Hopefully, I can see them again and, and meet some new people in New York City. So it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll, Kanai and I might even make a trip to Montreal. We're talking about it because. Um, we're gonna be up in that direction, so we'll we'll give you updates. It would be great to meet you on the on this world tour. I know some of the some of the fans in Germany <laughs> don't live on the other side of the country, and I apologize. We're only stopping in Munich for some of the Christmas markets, but I'll walk out here to the intersection, and uh, you can see a little bit of Ginza. There's the Peninsula Hotel. The Liberty Bell is right up here, okay? Liberty Bell is up there. So we saw about half of the half of the park. And there's the Imperial Palace, the moat around the Imperial Palace. And this is the uh, Yorakucho Hibiya area. And right there where those people are standing, when we look back past the Peninsula Hotel, we're gonna see Ginza. And then we're gonna end the live stream on the other side. There's the Imperial Palace is opened up. And you can see the bright Leon lights on the other side of this traffic light, this intersection. Let me just walk through here. It is wet. This is where the Thai Airlines office is, by the way. Beautiful big office. And that's Ginza and the Peninsula Hotel on the left there. So thanks everybody. A little bit extra walking. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> Stay dry. We haven't had the best weather, but, but we keep it real. Here's a little, little plug for the Rugby World Cup. Rugby World Cup's happening the next year. These are the mascots for the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, we didn't have the best weather today, but uh, I'm glad that we could share a little bit of American history. I think it's pretty cool when you walk around the city. Um, in a, a previous live stream, I showed you where um, the first American embassy was in Tsukiji, of all places, not in Akasaka, which is where it is today. And just a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, just last week I released the Ogasawara video and we got to see some of the history of the island of Chichijima, the World War II history, including um, President George H.W. Bush being shot down off of Chichijima. And you can see he made a trip back to Chichijima in 2002 to kind of put those events behind him. And that's kind of the feeling, you know. When I see the Liberty Bell and I see the occupation and I see where we were and where we are today, a lot has happened. and. Just, it's, a, it's a time to give thanks and a lot of Americans I saw they actually do come to the Liberty Bell to give thanks that's the Yamanote line going by and just these little teeny markers of the occupation from the 1940s and 50s the late 40s and the early 50s it makes me feel good that we did that something good happened from that and Japan is a lot stronger from it from where they were to where they are today for those asking there's the there's the um, 
Godzilla in the middle. <laughs> just, I know someone's gonna ask for it. Godzilla's in the middle of the screen. Have a good day, everybody. Stay dry out there. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next live stream, probably uh, tomorrow. The last 20 seconds, I'll just show you some traffic because I'm gonna get somewhere dry. I'm gonna get somewhere dry. Ah, hot cup of coffee, where are you?